What's up, everybody? Today we're talking Premiere, J cuts, L cuts, basic animation, and so much more. Get ready for some campus life, and we'll get started. Today we're going to learn how to make a nat sound piece or a natural sound video promotion using things such as A roll, B roll, L cuts, J cuts, and creating a simple animation with basic masking. We'll also add in some quick transitions to make everything nice and fluid. Now let's take a peek at what we'll be making. Campus life to me is a huge social aspect. It's about seeing everyone else on campus, meeting people, and just really getting in the spirit of college and just being happy where you are. It's just a really a great place to get involved with your academics and beyond to figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. All right, so that's what we'll be working on. With that in mind, let's jump into Premiere. Okay, the first thing you want to do to start this project, like always, is create a folder where all of your media will be housed. You always want to make sure that all your media is in the same folder so it doesn't unlink or fall offline. I've put all of the files that you need in the description below, but just to show you what we need, here's what they are. You need your footage folder, which is going to contain all of your shots of campus, which is going to be your B-roll. You need your interviews folder, which is going to have all of your interviews of our students about campus life and that's going to be our A-roll. And then you need your audio file. That's going to be our bed of music below everything. Once you have all of your files in your folder, let's open up Premiere. Okay, when we first open up Premiere, we want to start with New Project. So I'm going to come up here and click on the New Project button. So when your New Project window opens, the first thing you want to do is give your project a name. So I'm going to call this Last Name. That would be your last name. First Initial, that would be your first initial, underscore campus life. The next thing I need to do is the location of where all of this media will be and I want to put that into the folder that I created called campus life. So I'm going to hit my browse button. I'm going to navigate to my desktop and I'm going to click on my campus life folder and you'll see your footage and your interviews and your audio file are already in there. That's where we want to put our project as well. Once you've got that selected, click on Choose. All of the other settings that are here we'll leave as the default. Once we've got our name and our location set, now we can click on OK. The first thing we want to do is make sure we're working in the same workspace and then make sure we reset our workspace. Sometimes as you have different people working on the same computer, they may modify the workspace and you want to make sure everything is reset to factory defaults. We're going to be working in the editing workspace. Now you can see all of your workspaces listed across the top up here, but you can also go up to your top menus and go to window and go to workspaces and choose whichever workspace you're going to use. We're going to be using the editing workspace, but again, I'm going to reset this kind of resetting all of my tools and my factory defaults to make sure we're all on the same page. So I'm going to come down again inside of window and workspaces and I'm going to go to reset to save layout and that's just going to make sure that all of my windows and everything reset to the exact same place of where I want them to be. Each one of these panels that you see as I click on it will put a little blue box around the outside. That means that that particular panel is selected. That's important as you're doing certain things in the menu items or keyboard shortcuts. If you're in a different panel and you're trying to do something for a panel over here or up here, then that keyboard shortcut or that menu item might be grayed out or not work. So make sure what you're working on, whether it be in your project window or your timeline window or your program or source window, make sure that you see that blue box around the area that you're actually working on before you try to perform that keyboard shortcut or that menu item. In the bottom left hand corner you should find the project window. This you should see has your last name, first initial, campus life, the name of our project that we created. What we want to do is add all of our media into this area that we're going to use. So you can use a keyboard shortcut of command I or control I or you could also right click and hit import as well. Navigate to your campus life folder and you'll see that there's a project file in here now as well. We don't want to select that, but we do want to select these other three items. Our footage, I'm going to hold my command key and also click on interviews and also click on my mp3 audio file. If you're on a Windows PC, then you would hit the control key instead of the command key as we go throughout this tutorial. Once you've got those three things selected, click on import. Now once everything pops into your project window, you'll see that you have a couple of folders 
and an audio visual of your waveform here. Now there's a couple ways we can look at everything in here. We could click on down at the bottom left corner of our project panel. You'll see this square with a line under it. That's icon view. So we're seeing everything as a visual. If you want to see a list view of everything, the two squares with the two lines, you can click on that and now you have a list view of everything. Since we have video, we want to kind of look through everything as we're going through it. I'm going to keep this one in icon view for this project. You'll also notice these folders. As we double click on these folders, you'll see it opens up what's called a bin where everything is housed. Almost if you were to throw everything in a trash bin or recycling bins where everything is collected that you're going to use. So I can go back and forth between my bin that opened up in a separate tab back to my project to get to all of my elements. My project folder is where I want to keep everything that I'm going to use and these individual folders which are bins are where I'm going to organize specific things. In this case I've got all of my interviews organized in one folder and this is going to be what's known as our A role as we put everything together. A role is going to be our talking head, our interviews. They're going to tell our story through the responses to questions that we ask these students about campus life. So they're going to tell the story of our video without us having to add any voiceover or narration. That's going to be our A role. If I click back on my project panel over here and I double click on my footage, this is all the footage of campus and that's going to be called our B-roll. Our B-roll is used to cover up some of these interviews and some of our A-roll shots so it's not just a talking head the whole time. So B-roll is going to add interest to what it is we're talking about and visually create a little bit more to tell our story of what's going on in our video. So that's the difference between A-roll and B-roll and that's why we've got those in separate bins so we can choose between those pretty quickly. Okay, so now that we've determined the difference between A-roll and B-roll and between our bin of footage and our bin of interviews, we want to create a timeline over here on the right-hand side. And we want to make sure that that timeline matches what our footage aspect ratio is. So we're going to be working in 1920 by 1080 for our aspect ratio. And the way I'm going to create this timeline is from my interviews. I'm going to click back over here on my bin interviews tab. Again, if you haven't gotten that yet, you can go to your project tab and double click on your interviews folder and it will open up that bin for you. And you'll notice we've got everything sectioned out here for you between clips that are going to be at the end. The INT stands for our interview pieces and the END are our audio video clips that will be used for our interviews at the very, very ending of our overall story message that we're going to do here. So you'll notice there's an INT01, INT02, three, so on and so forth. We're going to add those into our timeline and then we're going to clean them up a little bit as we go along to make them fit together to tell the story. When I drag these over here, it's going to create our initial timeline for us. So I'm going to start with this INT01, left click and hold, and then I'm going to drag it. You'll see it has a little hand icon on it. I'm going to drag it over here to my timeline area where it says drop media here to create sequence and then I'm going to let go. When I do that, you'll notice that it creates this video clip with video on V1 and audio on A1, and you can see our subject up here in our program window. Realize as we go through this project, the window on the right, our program window, is going to be connected with our timeline window. And so those two are going to show us how we're piecing everything together. The window over here on the left is blank right now, which says source is going to be how I preview things to put into my timeline. So for example, if I double click on any one of my interviews over here, you'll see that that interview shows up on the left so that my source monitor is connected with my project or my bin, whatever I click on in here, it shows up on the left so I can preview it. I can add in and out points. I can take just the audio or just the video so that source connects with our project and our bin folders and that program connects with our timeline. Now here's the other thing to notice as we dragged our first clip into our timeline. Notice it gave the name of our timeline the same name as our clip and that can be confusing and I don't want to do that. So how can I differentiate between the two of these is to rename it. But if you look and you're trying to see in your visuals over here, well there's INT01 and then there's INT01 and so how do I tell the difference between the two of these? Here's a quick way to change it. I'm going to go back to my list view down here in the bottom left hand corner real quick. And I can see that I've got these little visual icons that represent all of my clips. The one that has the purple and the green, right? The purple is a little film strip 
and the green is an audio waveform. That means I have a video clip that has video and audio associated with it. Well, if I look at my INT01 and this INT01, those icons look different. The difference is this INT01 looks like it has some horizontal bars and a line going through it. That's our symbol for our timeline over here, and that's the one I want to rename. So here's how I do that. Click on the words INT01, and then I'm gonna call this timeline the same as our project, so I'm gonna call it last name, first initial, underscore, campus life. And then I'm gonna hit return. And it's automatically gonna move down to the next one as if I wanted to relabel everything. I only want to relabel just that one. So after you've hit return to snap your new name into place, and then it moves down one clip below that, then hit your ESC key, your escape key in the upper left hand corner, and it'll take that highlight off. Now we've got this thing labeled the way we want to, and you'll notice that your name is gonna change on your tab over here on your timeline. I'm gonna save as I go along. Now Premiere will do an automatic save every so often, and you can adjust that in the preferences, but just to be safe in case there's ever a power outage or anything, somebody accidentally kicks and unplugs your cord, I always hit Command S, that would be Control S on a Windows PC. Every step we go along to make sure everything's good. All right, now that we've got our first clip in here, I'm gonna change back down here in my project panel to my icon view, and I'm still in my interviews bin, and I'm gonna go through, and what I wanna do is I wanna take this timeline that I have here, I don't want that to be associated with all my interviews, I want that to be my actual project, right, and save with all of my project information over in my project tab, so I'm gonna move that. Here's how you do that. In your bin interviews where you've added that timeline now from your first clip, left click and hold on it to highlight it. While I continue to left click the whole time, don't let go, left click and hold and drag up to the tab that says project. I'm still left clicking and holding, but you'll see that the visuals have now changed to what's in my project window panel. And now I'm gonna put my hand down here while I'm still left clicking and holding and then let go. Now you'll see that that project timeline has been moved in here. Remember I said we wanna keep all of our items for our entire project here and then just use our folders for specific areas for organization. So now that my project is in there, it's separated from my footage and it's connected to my project area. Okay, with all that organized, let's go back to our interviews bin and now we can go through and piece everything together. I'm gonna to go ahead and select interview two and hold my command key and get three, four, five, six, and seven. Because I've already got one, so I don't need that one. Once I've got all of those selected, I'm gonna move them over to my timeline. Now here's a little trick for you. If you're having trouble seeing everything, especially as we get into the campus footage that we're looking at, if you have your mouse located over the window that you wanna see and you hit that tilde key, it's that little curved, horizontal line below your escape key in the upper left hand corner, hit that tilde key and it makes that window larger and now you can see all of your clips a little bit bigger. It expands that to the entire window. So now you could easily click on everything you wanted to see and then to get back to our normal view, you just hit that tilde again and that brings us back. Notice that works for any panel that I have my mouse over. If I'm over my timeline window with my mouse and I hit the tilde key, it makes that window larger. If I'm over my program window and I hit my tilde key, it makes that one larger. And then tilde to go in and tilde to go out. With all of these other clips selected, I'm gonna left click and hold and I'm gonna drag them over and I'm gonna put them right next to my interview number one, INT01 clip. Now all of these may need a little bit of adjusting and editing to them in order for us to get a natural flow of the conversation. And so that's where I'm gonna start. Now you notice I didn't add my ending clips yet. I wanna get the gist of everything together that we're gonna need for the bulk of this first. And then we're gonna go back and add some things as we go along. Now I wanna see this a little bit better. So we talked about the tilde key as one thing, but the other thing is gonna be expanding our tracks. If I hold down my option key or alt key, maybe on a PC or a Windows computer and then hit plus, it's gonna expand vertically my audio tracks so I can see those waveforms a little bit better. So now I can see where her voice rises and falls and I can see where little pauses are or dead spots are where I can make cuts to trim my audio back to where it needs to be. If I wanna see my video track expanded vertically as well, 
I would hold my command or control on a Windows PC and the plus key. Realize that the opposite of that is also true. To shrink it down, command minus shrinks that track down vertically. Command plus expands it vertically. Option minus for my audio shrinks it down vertically. Option plus expands it vertically. Same thing left and right. If I want to expand horizontally, I'll just hit my plus to zoom in horizontally and my minus to zoom out horizontally. Those plus and minus keys are located horizontally across left to right from where your number keys are at the top of your keyboard, just to the right of that zero key. Now I can put my mouse on top of that little icon that looks like a little pentagon, little home baseball play almost. Left click, hold and drag, <laughs> and I can control where that playhead is. From all these numbers that you see here, that's our time code, that's our point in time where we are. There's these little lines, looks almost like a ruler. I can also click anywhere in those ruler lines and move my playhead. So I can jump my playhead around anywhere I want to go. You can use your up and down arrow keys to get specifically to edit points. That is the point where an edit is made between two clips. And so my down arrow keys will take me between those clips and my up arrow keys will move me forwards in my timeline. So those keys are important to us as we go along. Now a couple of other important keys here are gonna be your J key, your K key, and your L key. My J key will rewind if I need to go backwards a little bit. My K key will pause me in between that. And my L key will go forward. Huge social aspect. The cool thing about this is instead of us having to listen to this in real time, we can listen to it in fast forward by hitting our L key and you get what is called kind of the chipmunk audio, right? So listen. It's about seeing everyone else on campus, meeting people, it's really getting the spirit of college and just being happy where you are. So I can get through this clip a little bit faster by fast forwarding by hitting that L key multiple times to speed up my clip a little bit. Now that we've got all of our clips into our timeline in the order that's going to tell our story, we want to tighten these clips up a little bit. And then we want to smooth out the audio in between each of these clips so it doesn't pop. If you notice that each one of the clips that I have in here has this little diagonal corner for each one. Now it looks like a triangle because it's where the two clips are. But I'm going to use my plus key to zoom in. And you'll see that it's a little bitty angle gray icon on the left of that one and on the right of that one. And that continues as I go through. What that means is I've used the entire clip in my timeline. Now, in order for us to create some transitions, we would have to have some overlap in terms of those clips. What that means is the computer has to generate how one clip has some space going into the next clip to create a transition between those. Now we're not gonna use transitions on our video clips, but we are gonna put a little audio transition between our audio so they don't pop. Here's what I mean. I'm happy where you are. It's just a really... See how we can hear a little pop? Listen to how this one changes. Do with your life. Hear that pop between life and the next clip? Do with your life. That little pop right there. We have to smooth that out by changing where our clips are touching down here. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a couple of frames off of every single one of these clips. You won't see this little triangle or a little gray angled box anymore, and it will allow us to put a cross dissolve in here to clean up each one of these. I'm also gonna cut out any extra sound of dead space that I don't need between the two clips while making sure that I also don't put the clips so close together that it sounds unnatural. You still want to have that natural pause in between some of your clips as you go from clip to clip. And we're going to add in music at the end too, so that's going to cover up any dead spots that we have. All right, so here's how we do that. I'm going to zoom in first by hitting my plus equals key to zoom in. I'm going to go to the front, and I'm going to look here at this first little bit and see if there's any of this beginning I can cut out. Campus life. There's some dead space in there before she starts campus life, so I'm going to move my playhead back to that front area right there. This is right where she says campus life. Now I could hit my keyboard shortcut of command K and cut that and then click on the part that I don't want and hit delete. That's one way to do it. I could also, I'm gonna undo to show you the other way. I could also just put my mouse to the left corner, make sure that my magnet is blue. That means it's highlighted to snap and put my playhead at the point where I'm gonna make that change and that cut, left click and hold as I get that red bracket arrow and then drag back to the right. And it's going to snap to my playhead. Campus life to me. And now that starts where I need it to. Now I'm going to use my down arrow key to get to the end of that clip where it changes between clips. I can use my up arrow key again to go between. My down arrow key to go between where all of my clips are located. So I just hit my down arrow key one time to go to that next clip. And let's see if we got some space here at the end we can get rid of. Where you are. Where you are. 
being happy where you are. So where you are ends about right there. And then we got that little bit of wind sound right there. So I'm going to cut that out right around there where you are and that little bit of wind. And then again, I'm going to click. This time I'm going to go to the bottom right edge and get that red arrow in that red bracket. Left click, hold and drag and snap it back. Now I need all of my clips back here right, to be tightened up as well. And I need to close this gap. So I'm going to close this gap first by clicking one time to highlight that area. And right click and choose ripple delete. And that's going to slide everything from back here to the front. So I don't have to drag each clip individually and slot it. All right, now with that one, let's see and look, you'll see that my arrows are now gone on my corners of that first clip. The next one's a little bit tighter when it starts talking. It's just a really a great place. It's just a really great place, right? So we've got to get in here and make that little, little adjustment. I'm zooming really far in this time. Again, I'm using my arrow key up to get exactly between my two clips. And then I'm going to use my right arrow one time to go ahead one frame because he's getting ready to start. I don't want to go very far. I don't have the luxury on this one like I did on the last clip where I've got more space. So I'm just going to go over one frame. And then again, I'm going to click my clip so it's selected. That puts that white box around everything. I'm going to go to that bottom left corner of my audio waveform on audio one, A1. I'm going to left click hold and I'm going to drag it to the right. Notice my little triangle is gone now. I'm going to hit my space bar to make sure I haven't cut anything off. It's just a really... It's just a really great. So we've still got that in there and I'm going to close my gap by clicking in that area. It forms this little white spot between my two clips. Right click and ripple delete. And I'm going to do the same thing at the end down here. So I'm going to use my down arrow key to get to the end of that clip. Back up a little bit more so I can hear and see what if I got some space here. What you want to do with your life. What you want to do with your life. All right, so I'm going to use my down arrow key again to get exactly between the clips. I'm going to use that left arrow key to go back a frame. I'm going to click so that the clip is selected in white. Put my mouse to the bottom corner to get my red arrow. Left click, hold, and drag. Make sure I didn't cut off any words. I'm going to listen to some of it. Do with your life. Do with your life. All right. And then I'm going to close this gap by clicking in here, right clicking, and ripple delete. And let's listen to our next clip. There are many. There's a lot of space in that one. So I'm going to cut out a lot of this part right here. So I'm going to move over, give him a little bit of space here since our last clip ended so abruptly. I'm going to give a little bit of space on this one. And we'll click so my clip is selected. Go to my left corner, left click, hold, drag it to the right. Click in that area, right click, ripple, delete. And I'm going to listen to those two and see how they go together. You want to do with your life. There are many campus events you want to do with your life. There and it, there, that goes kind of fast. So I'm actually going to command Z to undo that. And then I'm going to pull it back just a little bit to give it a little bit more space in there. And then I'm going to ripple delete again. And I'm going to listen to that again. That you want to do with your life. There are many campuses. That's going to sound better. That gives me a little bit of pause. And we're going to put a little cross dissolve in here in a minute to smooth that out as well. All right, let's continue with the next one. Down arrow. Listen to the back of this. Sessions. Sessions is where he ends there. I'm going to shorten that one up a little bit. Select it. Trim it back. I'm going to go to my next one over here. Listen to that. Everybody. Everybody. So that one's kind of tight when that one starts. Use my up arrow and my right arrow. And then I'm going to bring that one over a little bit. Close that gap. And then listen to the two of those, how they go together. Group study sessions. Everybody is in the same boat. Everybody. So that sounds good together. i am use my down arrow to go to my next one and listen to where the back end ends. Really great time. Great time, right? So I'm just going to cut back here. So I'm going to use my down arrow to get between the clips, my left arrow to go back one frame. And again, I'm going to left click and drag to go back there. Let's see what my next one starts with. Everyone is. Everyone starts kind of in there. Right in there somewhere. So I'm going to use, again, my up arrow to go to the beginning of the clip, my right arrow to go over one frame. And I'm going to drag that one over. And we'll click between, right click, and ripple delete. And I'm going to back up to see how that sounds. A really great time. Everyone is happy. To so that one kind of works together. Again, my down arrow. I'm going to repeat this process all the way through. So when I hit my slash key, you'll see that now all of those little triangles that were in the corners of all my clips should now be gone. 
and it's a little bit smoother through here. Now, we still want to make sure that these little pops that can occur as we have our cut points between all of our different audio tracks in here that go along with each one of our A-roll clips for our sound bites. We want to make sure they're nice and clean, and to do that, we're going to add a cross dissolve between each one. Here's how you do that. Come over here to the left where we've got all of our interviews. In the upper right-hand corner of that panel, you'll see this double arrow. Click on that double arrow and come down and choose Effects. You could also go to your top, top menu, go to Window, and you could choose Effects there to turn it on if you don't see it. Now, once your Effects window pops up, we want to go under the Audio Transition. So hit that drop-down arrow for Audio Transition, and Constant Power is the one that we're going to use. Here's how this works. I'm going to come back over here to my timeline and zoom in a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to put my playhead between my two clips, my first two clips, so that that blue line is exactly on my edit point. I'm going to take my constant power and left click, hold, and drag. And it's an audio transition, so I want to make sure I'm on my A1, not on my V1. On my A1, I'm going to place that clip right in between my two tracks. And I'm going to zoom in really tight so you can see. Now, if it only appears on the left side, that means we need a little bit more space because we want it to appear on both my left clip and my right clip. So I'm going to click it because I can click off of everything. You'll see just like I can click on a clip so I can select it. Anytime you can click in this gray area to deselect it. I can also click on the actual transition and then click delete if it's not what I want. Because watch what happens. When I left click, hold and drag, and I'm holding the whole time, and I drag it right on top of it. Now you see if I go to the left edge of it, it's just on my left clip. And if I put it right in between the two, you'll see there's a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right. Now what I want to do is I want to shorten this very, very tiny. So I'm going to double click on where it says constant power. And again, you've got to be zoomed in really tight to see it. And I'm going to change this duration to 10 and hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to smooth over a very quick cross audio fade to where this sounds. So I'm going to zoom back out and now you can listen to it and see it should be nice and smooth. Just being happy where you are. It's just a really a great place. So now as it transitions from person to person, that cut is nice and smooth. We want to do the same. Now some of these might be smaller because we had more space to adjust on some of these clips and some of them were a bit tighter. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me zoom back in and I'll hit my down arrow key to go to my next one between interview two and interview three. I'm going to go and get my constant power, left click, hold and drag and drop it. Remember, I don't want it on one side. I don't want it on just the other side. I want it to overlap. So I got to make sure it's on top of where that cut is. Again, I'm going to double click on my constant power. It's going to pop up a duration. I'm going to type in 10 and hit return. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to listen to that part. Figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. There are many campus events like Again, don't worry about the video changing right now with the jump cuts between person to person. We're going to cover that with our B-roll shots. But listen again to your audio how smooth it is. Beyond to figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. There are many campus events. So we don't have those pops and those cuts. So we want to continue to do that all the way through with the rest of our interview clips. I'm going to zoom back in. Use my down arrow. Now here's a little trick I can use too. I'm going to copy this constant power. So again, I can click in the gray and everything's off. I can click on any clip. I'm going to click on the constant power. I'm going to hit Command C. I'm going to hit my down arrow, and then I'm going to hit Command V as in victory to paste, right? And notice that it's already shorter for this clip than what I need it to be. So I'm going to type in 10, and it's going to put this little bit of a diagonal line because it's saying, hey, you've really only got six frames in here, but we're going to try to do it for you and see what it sounds like. I'll zoom back out, and I'm going to see how that sounds. Studies such as tutoring sessions or group study sessions. Everybody is in the same boat. And it sounds nice and clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to now add this to the rest of all of these clips. I'm going to hit my down arrow. Because I've copied it, I'm going to command V to paste it. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it. There it is. I want to double click on it. It only did two seconds. I'm going to change it to 10 and hit OK. And then I'm going to listen. Again, zoom back out. A really great time. Everyone is happy. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to just do that for the rest of my clips down arrow, command V. That puts it again on my edit point so it overlaps both clips. Double click, change that to 10, hit return, check it out. They're here for a reason and they love it. Um, it's very different. Also nice and clean, down arrow, command V. Again, it's control V on a Windows PC. 
double click on the constant power little visual icon of our transition type in 10 frames hit ok again i'm going to check it to listen to it run wild with it it's so much fun just finding little and that's pretty good and then if i down arrow again you'll see i'm at the end of my clip so all of those audio transitions there of that constant power create a little bit of an overlap between our audio clips of our interviews they get rid of any pops that we may have and make our audio soundtrack nice and clean and smooth all the way through and now i've got my story for my campus video of what i'm going to tell again this is a little promotional type of piece that you might see on a website or something quick that they would post out on social media to promote living on campus or promote that university in a positive manner for prospective students. Now that we've got all of our A roll in here, let's label these things. So where it says video one over here, there's this little gray space on the right hand side. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to rename that track and I'm going to call that my interviews. Let's do INT for interviews and then hit return. And my audio one, I'm going to right click on that and rename that. And I'm going to call that again I N T A U D O, so interview audio. And I'm going to save those so that I've got everything labeled as I go along. Now, I don't really want to mess with any of that right now. I don't want to mess it up. And I know it sounds pretty good as it transitions from clip to clip to clip. So I'm going to lock these tracks so I don't mess them up. There's a little lock located to the left of this V1 and to the left of this A1. I'm going to click on both of those to lock those tracks. Once I do that, notice I can't move them or select them or change them over here. That's a good thing to get used to doing if you're working with multiple audio and video tracks. Again, if I wanted to see this section a little bit bigger, I can hit my tilde key and I can see things a little bit larger over in that window and tilde to go back out of it. All right, I'm going to go back over to my window where my project was, and I'm still located in my effects tab. If you can't see all of your tabs, you can again go to that little double arrow in the upper right hand corner, click on that, and I'm going to go back to my project. And the one I want to go into now is my footage. So I'm going to go into my footage bin, and I'm going to hit the tilde key with my mouse over top of this so I can see. These are all the different clips from campus that I want to go through and use. I'm going to use about three seconds of some of these clips as I go through. So the clip is not too long and I can put lots of different clips as I go through here. The ones that I choose to cover up, you can use the same ones or you can use different ones. That's why we've given you a lot of different choices here to sort through to figure out what it is you want to use. Try to listen to the audio that's being said of the interviews and try to piece some shots together that make sense with what they're saying. All of this should work for generic campus B-roll. And again, B-roll are the shots that we're going to use to cover up some of these cuts between our interviews and to add some visual interest to tell our story. All right, so I'm going to hit my tilde key again to go back out of that. And let's go and listen. Now we're going to add a clip at the beginning before we start our interviews. And we're going to add a clip at the end after our interviews. But I want to work on just this middle section first. So I know we want our first lady here to show up on camera. I'm going to let her be the whole talking piece to get us going at the beginning. And then when our second person here talks, I think I'm going to cover up some of what he has to say. So let's listen to his clip. Be where you are. It's just a really a great place to get involved with your academics and beyond. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start to introduce some L cuts and some J cuts. And what those are, I'll show you as we get our other clips in our timeline with our B-roll. That L cut is where the audio is going to continue into the second clip as it changes visually and the J cut is going to be where that audio begins before the video clip comes in. I'll show you what those as we go along the difference. I think I'm going to cover up this entire clip of our second person here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on V2 to select that. That's where all of our B-roll is going to go on V2. So I'm going to go ahead and label that and right click and rename it. Now you can call it B-roll or you can call it footage. I'm going to call it footage because that's where all of our footage is going to go. And I'm going to go and select my first clip. So I'm going to again put my mouse over my bin footage. I'm going to hit my tilde key so I can see a little bit better. And I think I want a shot of people walking on campus. So I'm going to choose this one right here and I'm going to double click it. When I double click it, it opens up in my source window. And it has a little playhead as well where you can click and drag through and you can kind of see all the people walking through campus over here. Um, that's a good section of people coming there right when the backpack sort of comes through. I'm going to start there. You can click any section there you want. Now when you find the area where you want to start, you want to hit your I key on your keyboard. That's going to set our beginning point, our starting point, what's called an end point. I-N, end point. And I'm going to use roughly about three seconds of this clip. 
give or take a little bit. So instead of having to put this entire clip down here and then shorten it like we did with our red bracket and arrow, I'm gonna come over here to this area on the left, what's called the time code. It's counted in left to right hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And there's 30 frames that create one second of video at the frame rate that we're working out right now, which is 30 frames per second. Okay, so I've got my endpoint set now, adjusted a little bit. Now I wanna go three seconds forward. Now I could drag my playhead to try to get three seconds, but here's a quicker, easier way. On my time code, I'm gonna click. To get my plus to show up on my keyboard, I have to hold shift and plus. And I'm gonna type in 300 to go ahead three seconds. Remember the last two zeros are frames, so 300 is the equivalent of three seconds. And then hit return, and now it's gonna move my playhead over three seconds. Hit your O key on your keyboard, that creates your out point of when you wanna go out of that clip. And notice now that my duration over here is roughly around three seconds. Now this clip does have audio associated with it because I can see there's a video clip here and there's an audio clip here. And I don't wanna take the audio with it too and then have to unsync it or get rid of it. I just want the video clip. So I'm gonna put my mouse on top of this little film strip, left click, hold and drag it down to V2. And again, where I want it to be is I'm gonna cover up this first little section of our person talking about campus. So I'm going to put it at the end of <laughs> our last little part here of this young lady talking. Happy where you are. Where she says happy where you are. I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline a little bit. So I'm gonna overlap that a little bit and move that over. So at the end of where she says happy where you are. Happy where you are. Then that's gonna to change to this shot right here. It's just a really a great place to get involved with your academics and with your academics. And I'm gonna to continue to cover up his entire first little piece, which is gonna be our IN2. I'm gonna cover up that whole little piece. So I'm just gonna put a couple shots there and then we're gonna pop in to our uh, young man here on interview three. So I'm gonna cover up all of interview two. So I'm gonna go and get another clip. So I'm gonna come back over here, put my cursor over top of my footage, and then hit my tilde key. And then I'm gonna go and find another shot that I'm gonna use for my second shot. I kinda of like this other shot right here, this back of campus area. So I'm gonna find a spot where there's a lot of people walking. That's a good section right in there. We got a lot of interaction of stuff. Again, I'll hit my I key to set my endpoint. I'm gonna get roughly three seconds, give or take a little bit. So I'm gonna go up here and click on my time code. I'm gonna hit shift plus to make my plus appear. I'm gonna type in 300 and hit return. It's gonna advance my playhead over for three seconds. Hit my O key, which is my out point. And now again, you'll see you've got roughly three seconds. Again, put my hand icon here on top of the film strip. Left click, hold and drag and drop it. And again, I wanted these two clips to touch, so I'm gonna left click and drag it over there. And then I'm gonna come into my timeline and just zoom out a little bit and let's just see what this looks like as we go from the young lady into covering up the INT02 clip for the interview and then moving into interview three. College and just being happy where you are. It's just a really a great place to get involved with your academics and beyond to figure out what it is that you wanna do with your life. There are many campus events like... All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to check that out one more time where it changes. Involved with your academics and beyond to figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. There are many campus events. And that's pretty good. Now, if you notice, he starts talking. There are many campus events before we see him, right? And I do that for two reasons. One, it covers up this cut point that we had where it went from the visual of him the first time to the second time. If you remember, I can click this little eyeball right here and I can toggle this off and show you. I was just going to temporarily hide that. So before, remember, it went from here your life. There, to there, there, right? So you see how this image jumps. It's called a jump cut. We don't want that. So that's where our B-roll helps to cover those jump cuts up so we can kind of hide mistakes, basically, if we cut those pieces together because it was not one seamless interview where he said that. It was a couple different pieces that we took from his interview to put those together. So that would be something you would go through and do if you recorded your own footage and recorded your own interviews. You need to go through and find the sound bites, the best little pieces to use that will tell a story for your video. So to do that, we had to cut him into different sections. So our B-roll covers that up a little bit. I'm gonna hit that eyeball to turn it back on. The other thing that you notice here, this forms a little L. Right, this is an L cut. So our B roll, as it extends beyond, right, where our beginning for our interview three starts, this shape here forms an L, that's an L cut. And that L cut again is where the audio from this clip begins before we see right here. So this video begins or continues and goes over before we see the video of this clip that forms an L cut right there. So what that looks like again, 
you want to do with your life. There are many campus events like... So he goes on and starts saying many campus events. This is where we'll come into him for the first time. I'm going to save that little bit that I worked on. So I'm going to command S to save. And I'm going to listen to see what he says and figure out what else we could add in for our next B-roll shots. Concerts, sporting events, extracurricular activities, as well as things to help you in your studies. such as. All right. So when he says extracurricular activities, I think that's a good time to go show some more footage. So I'm going to go back to that point. You want to make sure that you're seeing our interview people at some point in time so we recognize the voice. So I wouldn't want to cover him up completely and never see him because we saw this female and we'd be wondering where the male voice came from. So we always want to see a little bit of them. But again, the more shots we can get in here, the more interest it is to the viewers. So again, I'm going to come back and put my mouse over top of my bin, hit my tilde key so I can see a little bit easier. And now I'm going to go and find in another campus shot. We're talking about extracurricular I think this is a good shot here to show extracurricular. Again, you can choose whichever shots you want to. All right, I'm going to move my playhead around and find a good spot. That shows a lot of people moving there. I'm going to hit my I key for the beginning. I'm going to click on my time code, hit my shift plus to get my plus. Again, I'm going to go about three seconds. I'm going to type in 300, hit return. Remember to hit that O key for my out point. And then I'm going to put my mouse over the film strip part for video only. Left click, hold, and drag. And again, I've got my horseshoe magnet selected. It's in blue, so it's going to snap to that playhead. Okay, so I'm going to put a few clips over here before we get into our interview four section. And I'm going to try to match these up a little bit with what he's kind of saying visually. So we've got extracurricular activities. As well as things to help you in your studies. Things to help you in your studies. So I'm going to shorten this one up a little bit, and I'm going to add my next clip there. It's something to do with study. So let me go back to my bin, hit my tilde, and then I know there's a clip near the library over here where this one says library return. So I'm going to use that one, and I'm going to find some movement in here. We've got some people moving across right here walking. So I'm going to hit my I key for that. Go to my time code, get to my plus 300, hit return, set my out point, and move it down. And again, I'm going to make sure my playhead's at the exact spot so my arrow keys, again, snap me to the beginning and end of each clip. Left click, hold, and then drag and snap that to that point. And let's see how those match up. Events, extracurricular activities, as well as things to help you in your studies, such as tutoring sessions or group studies. Or group studies. So we can give that kind of tutoring sessions, group studies. Your studies, such as tutoring sessions, or when he says or right there, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to trim that back and let's go and find something that might work as a group. So I'm going to come back over to my bin and then I'm going to find there's a group walking right here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to choose that section right there with them kind of going down the stairs in a group. I'm going to set my endpoint. I'm going to do my plus 300, hit return, hit my O key for my out point. And again, I'm going to drag that down and snap that to my spot. And then I'm going to see where I want to cut it out roughly right where he begins talking again. So our next person comes in. Everybody is in the same. Everybody's in the same. I'm going to cut it right there. So we go back to him. So I'm just going to shorten that a little bit. And let's see what that section looks like now. Sporting events, extracurricular activities, as well as things to help you in your studies, such as tutoring sessions or group study sessions. Everybody is in the same boat. Everybody... All right, so like that, so I'm going to save that. Everybody's in the same boat. Let's see what he says here for our section. Wants to meet new people, have fun. Everybody wants to meet new people and have fun. So let's come in with a different shot there. So I'm going to come back over here to my bin of my footage, my tilde key. We've got a shot here of people skateboarding, so I'm going to use that. Find a spot here where they kind of come in together, which is good. So I'll set my endpoints. I'll go to my three seconds forwards. Set my out point, and then I'm going to drag that down where everybody's having fun. Fun. So it's just people have fun. Have fun. We'll start it there at have fun. All right, and then I think we're going to cover up um, this section A really here. great time. Everyone is happy to be here, and they just are here for a reason. That's a good chance for us to get some more shots in, is to cover up that section. We've already seen her once, so we don't really need to introduce her again. We can just cover it up with some more shots. So we're going to do that. So let's go through and add some more shots after our skating shot here. Okay, at this point in time, go and find some other B-roll shots to add to your video. Make sure you come back to your A-roll, your talking heads every now and then. 
Make sure you use your B-roll to cover up any jump cuts between interviews. Try to listen to the voice of what's being said. Add in various shots as you go along. Add a little bit more interest and to add value to what your video is. And then I'll jump back in and we'll add our next steps. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to save that. So now I've got my B-roll that's going to cover everything up. It's going to cover up where my clips change between my interview people and also has lots of different shots in there to add some variety, some interest so we can see what actually goes on on campus. And we've got our A and our B roll stuff together. Now going back to our L cuts and J cuts, this if you'll see from V2 to V1, you'll see this forms a little bit of a J symbol. That's our J cut where our audio is going to continue below but our picture is going to change up here. That's going to be our J cut. And if you look at these over here, as our video on our campus is going, but we're actually hearing the sound of the talking of our interview six, and then it changes over and to where you actually see our person, that's our L cut. So those are your L cuts and your J cuts, and that's our A roll and our B roll. Now I want to go and add our ending clips in here of our interview piece. And I want to then add a, a video to end with and a video to begin with of our B roll to kind of tie all this together. So I'm actually going to go back now and lock my V2 and unlock my V1 and my A1 of my interview and my interview audio. And I'm going to go and add those ending pieces in here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the end of all of my clips here. And I'm going to go back into my interview bin. And I'm going to use this N1, N2, N3 and repeat the process. I'm going to click on N1 hold down my command key and hit N2, N3, control on a Windows PC, left click, hold and drag these over. Make sure I put them on V1 and A1. I'm gonna leave some space in here real quick while I tighten these up a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in. And remember we've got our little triangle issues we've gotta take care of. So let's see what they say first. Don't worry about your B-roll up top. We'll adjust that to fit things in a minute. Campus life is amazing. Campus life is amazing. So we want to start right off the bat. So I'm going to get rid of all this extra space in here, but make sure it still sounds natural with my last one. Part about being here. He says being here, right? You're part about being here. And then that's a good little place right there for us to bring in campus life is amazing, where I'll stop my playhead. So I'm going to shorten this back up to roughly right where he says campus life is amazing. And I'm going to slide everything back. So again, I'm going to go to my second tool here, which is that track forward. I'm going to click on all of these to select them and then I'm going to slide these all back and just see how that sounds naturally. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. Remember V goes back to my selection tool and just see how that sounds. This is probably my favorite part about being here. Campus life is amazing. All right, and that's good, right? So campus life is amazing. So that pause works. Let's see if I ripple delete it, how it sounds favorite part about being here. Campus life is amazing. And that sounds even better. So what I'll do is I'll go back and add my crosses all like I did before, but let's tighten everything else first. Campus life is amazing. Campus life is amazing. That's a good spot to stop it and I can pull back and that gets rid of my little triangle there. Listen to the next one. Is fabulous. Is fabulous. I'm going to cut out the is and just change it to fabulous so it snaps really quick between amazing, fabulous, and whatever our last person says here. So he says fabulous right there. I can use my arrow keys and go frame by frame to right where he says fabulous. And then I'm going to pull to trim it and let's ripple delete and let's see what we get. Campus life is amazing. Fabulous. Campus life is amazing. I'm going to tighten that up too from amazing. So I get those really tight. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to tighten that one up some more. And then I'm going to tighten this one by ripple deleting and let's see what we got. Campus life is amazing. Fabulous. Don't worry about the jump cut because we're going to change that. And then after fabulous, I'm going to pause and I'm going to cut it there as well. So I'm going to trim that one back. And then I'm going to ripple delete that one. And let's see what our last person says. Life is the best. Life is the best. We're going to change it to just is the best. The best. Let's see if that's working right there for us. Trim that one back. The best. And that's good. And then I'm going to trim that extra off at the end. And then I'm going to ripple delete that, right? Now you'll notice that my little triangles are gone for all of them. I'm going to save all of that. And remember our audio trick, we're going to do the same thing. Come back over to our panel on the left, hit our drop down arrows of our little double arrows, excuse me, go to effects, our constant power. Again, we're going to drag it and drop it right in between those two. 
double click on that. I want to change that to 10 frames and hit return. Then I can click on this constant power and command C or control C, use my arrow keys to go exactly between and I can paste it. I'll double click it to double check. That one's 10 so I'm good. Use my down arrow, command V again to paste. Double click check it, that one's okay. So now let's listen to those. Actually before I do that, I'm gonna unlock my V2 and I'm gonna bring this last clip back so it stops just a little bit over where it changes because I'm actually gonna put a transition there a little bit. So I'm gonna have that go over just a little bit before my, my ending one clip starts and let's see what that looks and sounds like. This is probably my favorite part about being here. Campus life is amazing. Fabulous. It's the best. Right, and that's a good spot. So we've got those kind of boom, 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 amazing, fabulous, the best, boom, 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 back together. So it kind of sums us up right there. So I'm gonna command S to save that. Now I've got the bulk of my video together. So I'm gonna add some music to this, and then we're gonna put sort of a going in and going out clip to get us started before we start all of our interview pieces. I'm gonna do some more locking again. So I'm gonna lock video two, my footage. I'm gonna lock video one and A1 for my interview items. I'm gonna go back to my project and there is my audio file that I'm going to use. I'm gonna put that on A2. So I'm gonna click on my audio file to select it out of my project panel. Left click, hold and drag and bring that down into A2. And then I'm gonna leave my mouse over top of my project window and hit my tilde key. So again, you can see everything. Now notice that my audio is a lot longer than what my video is. And so we're gonna end up cutting some of this as we go along. The other thing you want to pay attention to is the volume level of this audio that we brought in for our music. This line running through here is your volume line, and we want to make sure that that music complements what we've got here, but not overpowers what we've got. It wants to add to and add interest to our video, but not overpower our voiceover, which would be a problem. But right now, it probably will if we listen to it. There are many campus events like concerts. So our music level is too loud, so we definitely want to adjust that. I'm actually gonna use my mixer to adjust that. I'll hit my tilde key to go back. All right, so now that I've got my music in here, we can see that it's a little bit too loud. We need to adjust it. And so I want it to actually be full volume at the beginning and then come lower as our interview section is going on and then come back a little bit at the end and then fade out at the very, very end. So to do that, we're gonna do something called ducking where the volume level of the music is gonna duck down below when our volume of our interview section takes place. But before I do that, I've got to check the overall volume of my music clip. To do that, I'm going to solo by hitting the S on that track for audio two. I'm gonna name this track, so I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna rename that to music. And then I'm gonna hit Command S to save that. Then I'm gonna to go to my top menus and choose window and come down and choose audio track mixer to open up my track mixer. And you'll see that our A1 is our interview audio and our A2 is our music. And these set of sliders I can use to adjust sound on those tracks. So I wanna adjust my music track. What I'm gonna do is play some of this music and you'll see the VU meters here, just like we have VU meters to the right of our timeline over here. And it's probably gonna be a little bit too loud. I want the maximum it hits is roughly around this minus six area. So as I play, I'm gonna drag this slider down in volume to adjust. So that's pretty good there. So I brought it down roughly uh, negative five, roughly negative 4.9. And I'm gonna click these little red boxes to get rid of all of the times where the music was too loud. I'm gonna back it up and I'm gonna watch my VU meter. My VU meter here, right, should also match my VU meter on the right, which is my main mix, because that's the only thing I've got going out right now, not my interview sounds. Minus six. Minus six, so that's gonna work. So now that the maximum that level will be is at minus six, and now we've got to adjust the rest of the way through for all of my audio clips. All right, so I'm done with that track mixer. I'm gonna click back on my source files over here. Okay, so now that we've got our music track volume level lowered, we want to do the ducking effect. Here's how we do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my top menus and go to window, and I'm gonna choose essential sound. Now when I choose Essential Sound, make sure you're on the Edit tab for that. 
and we've got to tell all of our A1 narration to be set to dialogue and our music to be set to music. To do this, I'm going to make sure I'm on my selection tool and I'm going to go in this gray area. So I'm zoomed out. I'm going to left click, hold, and drag and select all of my interview audio clips. And I'm going to click over here in my essential sounds panel, dialogue. Now I'm going to come back into my timeline and click onto my music track on A2, and I'm going to select that to music. I'm also going to hit this little box here for ducking, and it's got some presets already in here, and I'm going to click generate keyframes. And then I'm going to put my mouse back over my timeline, hit my tilde key to show you, and then zoom in. And what happens is it adds these keyframe ramps as to where it thinks the audio needs to be lowered for when all of our voiceover or our narration takes place. And it does a pretty good job of ramping it up and ramping it down at the beginning after we moved everything over a little bit to where we want to be. Let's just check it out and see how it is. Campus life to me is a huge social aspect. It's about seeing... I think the music might be a little bit too low so we can adjust it and regenerate the keyframe. So here's how we do that. I'm going to hit the tilde key to go back. I'm going to move over here to my sensitivity so I can increase the sensitivity to bring it up a little bit more if I want to. And then the duck amount, I can choose to bring it down more or to bring it down less. Let me show you how this works. If I drag it to the right and I increase my decibels and then I generate keyframes, I want you to notice where we are first. So right around in here, right, you can see where the volume line went down. When I generate the keyframes now at 26, Notice it brings the line down even lower. So we don't want to bring the decibel level number over here more to the right. I want to drag it more to the left. And so we go over less decibels. I'm going to go over maybe nine and then generate keyframes. And then that brings it down even less. Let's see what that sounds like. Everyone else on campus, meeting people, and just really getting in the spirit of college. And that might be a little bit too loud. So I'm going to go with a happy medium of maybe 12, somewhere around in there and then regenerate the keyframes. And then I'm gonna go and listen again. Seeing everyone else on campus, meeting people. Sounds pretty good on that one. Let's check our other people. Place to get involved with your academics and beyond to figure out what it is that you wanna do with your life. There are many campus events like concerts. That sounds pretty good. Same boat, everybody wants to meet. All right, let's listen again. They just, they're here for a reason and they love it. Um, it's very different from all right so somewhere in there you can kind of decide where it's going to be i think that'll work pretty good the other thing i want to see is where it comes in and ends how fast is this ramp this might be a little bit too fast for what we're looking for i'm going to zoom in because she actually starts talking right around here and that's where i want the music to come down i want it to stay up before that so i'm going to adjust this line here if i can click on any one of these keyframes Right, I can hold shift to click multiple keyframes and they turn blue. I can actually slide them left or right. So once I click and hold here, I'm going to slide a little bit. And I'm going to hold shift so it locks it in proportion so I can't go up and down after I've started sliding. And notice it's taking both of those because I clicked on both of those. Let me undo that and show you that again. If I click on one keyframe, it turns blue. If I hold shift and click on multiple keyframes, both of them turn blue. Now I'm going to still left click on this second one. Remember it's around 11.5 negative decibels is where we brought it down. I'm going to start to drag a little bit to the right, but then I'm going to hold shift and it's going to keep it locked so I can't go up or down in my decibel level. And I'm going to bring that second one to roughly around the point where she starts to talk there in that waveform. That way it's going to ramp down as it gets closer to her. I'm actually going to move it over just a little bit more. So now let's see what that sounds like. Campus life to me. So now it dips more right when she starts to talk as opposed to too soon, which is what it did before. I'm going to check the ending and do the same thing to that in terms of where that ramps out and make any changes there that I need to. You can also make these ramps longer by just clicking on one and then pulling it out longer, right? Or adjusting one if you needed to that way. All right, let's see how this one at the end goes out. The best. That's actually pretty good. And then I'm going to ramp this down by creating keyframes on my own to end it with my last kind of clip that I have there. So let's play and check. It's the best. And then I'm gonna take it out there. 
So I'm going to create my own keyframes here. To do this, let me go back out. I'm actually going to use my pen tool to create my keyframes. Keyboard shortcut is P. So I'm going to click on my pen tool. I'm going to go back over and get into my larger view. And I'm going to click once on that line. I'm going to move over a little bit and click again on that line. And with my pen tool still selected, I'm just going to take and drag that second keyframe that I made all the way down to make a ramp. And then I'm going to go back and hit my V key to go back to my selection tool. Again, remember that's my tool on my toolbar there. And then let's listen to see what that sounds like. It's the best. And then it fades out nice and slow. That's going to be all I need for that. So all this back part I don't need. I'm going to click on that so it's still selected. I'm going to hit Command K to make a cut. Control K on a Windows computer. Then click the back part that I don't want and hit delete. And that's going to be the end of my piece. And then I'm going to save everything. All right, now that we've got that done, we've got two pieces left. We've got to add our beginning clip that I told you we're going to add of our B-roll and our ending clip that's going to take us in and out. And then we're going to add a quick little animation and some transitions in here. First thing I'm going to do is go back over into my footage and I'm going to make that section bigger with my tilde key. And there's a piece here walking through that I like as we travel through here. All right, so I like this spot right here, right before this young lady walks in the door. And so I'm gonna start it right there. Now, I don't know how long quite I'm gonna use. I know I need to get roughly about a second in here before we get started. So instead of setting a really long out point, I'm just gonna play a little bit here. And then I'm gonna hit my O. So I know I don't overlap anything down in my timeline because what I don't want to do is I don't want to put a really long clip here that's gonna go over top and mess this next clip up on V2. So I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna take this section again with the film strip with the hand, drag it down there, and then what we got. Campus life to me is a huge so Now that's not a bad spot to go out, but this is really slow lady walking in and our music's really fast. So let's speed this clip up a little bit to make it seem like it's a little bit more of a faster start. I'm gonna click on my new footage clip of my walkthrough number three there. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to speed and duration. And then I'm gonna change my speed to 500% for the speed percentage and hit okay. And then I'm gonna drag this back out so it takes it all the way back to where she says campus life roughly. So I'm gonna drag it out to about there. And let's see what that looks like now. If you get this little staggered kind of look to your video with this yellow line, you may need to render it out real quick. The way to do that is go up top to where it says sequence at the very top menus and go to render in to out. It'll process all of your video clips that are in there, but it's going to make this line turn green instead of yellow so everything will play smoothly, especially if you're on an older computer. That's a good thing that you may have to do from time to time to make your clips play a little bit cleaner. Uh, and as you add lots of effects and things like that, that may be another need to have to render that out real quick as you're editing your video. So we'll just let that process real quick. Now that it's processed, let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna put my mouse over my program window this time and hit my tilde key and then play. Campus life to me. That works pretty good. So now we've got this fast paced video that we've got going on and then we cut into where we have of our interview person. You can adjust that a little clip forwards or backwards if you need to, to get different spots to where it comes in. If you want to last a little bit longer, you can, or start a little bit sooner, you can. So that gets in our initial clip. I'm gonna save that. I like that effect, so I'm gonna do that the same way at the end. So I'm going to go to the end of my last clips in here and zoom into that section where she says campus life is the best. best. I'm gonna get that best right in there. I'm gonna come over to my footage again and I'm going to find, I like that walkthrough type of deal. So I'm gonna end that way as well. And I'm gonna use this one here as we're walking through this section in here of campus. Right in that spot. So I'm gonna start somewhere in there. I'll hit my I again, just play just a little bit and then hit my O and go back to just my film strip. Drop that onto V2. Again, I need to make sure all of these are locked so I don't mess them up. I should have done that before, so make sure they're locked. And then I'm gonna change the speed of this one again to right click on it and then go to speed and duration and then type in 500% and hit okay. And then I'm going to, I want this to last more into here. So I'm gonna drag this out just a little bit. I may end up changing this volume level so it's not quite so big. 
And then I'm gonna watch, come over here in tilde. Best. I like that. So then let's fade it just a little bit sooner. So I'm gonna come back down here. Notice again, I'm just hitting my tilde key to make the different windows bigger that I want to see for different sections, whether that be my video clips, my program window to what my video looks like on this full screen or into my timeline. That's just my tilde key. So as this goes through here, I'm going to just fade this audio out a little bit faster. So I'm going to go here and change that. Remember, I'm going to click both of these keyframes by holding shift. And I'm going to start to move just a little bit, hold shift, and it's going to bring both of them. And I'm just going to ramp it down roughly in there. And then I want it to end around the same time that my video ends right around that same spot. So I've got to unclick so they're both not selected and then bring it down. And let's go back and listen and watch and see what that sounds like. Fabulous. It's the best. All right, that works pretty good. Last thing I want to do on that is add a little dissolve as this goes out. And then I may change that audio a little bit more. So to do that, I'm going to go back over here to my panel on the bottom left where my project window is. Hit that double arrow again and go back to our effects panel. This time I'm going to go to Video Transitions, I'm going to go to Dissolve under Video Transitions, and I'm going to choose Cross Dissolve, left click hold, and I'm going to put it on that very back edge of that last clip there. Double click on that, it's going to be preset to one second dissolve, that's fine, I'll hit OK. This may determine if we lengthen this clip a little bit, so let's check that out. So we go back in and we play. The best. And again, you see I've got my little yellow line, so I'm going to go back in sequence and I'm going to render that real quick. So it processes that. It's going to play it back from the front. I don't want it in the front. I want to go at the end. So I'm just going to change that so I can see at the end here real quick. It's the best. Yep. And I think I do want it actually to go a little bit longer. So I'm going to pull it a little bit longer like we had it. And then I'm going to adjust my audio again so that my audio fades. I'm just going to grab the one about the same amount of time as that does. So now let's go and take a peek and see if that's better. It's the best. That works pretty good. That's a nice ending, but I don't need all this extra sound here. So I'm going to go use my arrow keys to get to the end of that clip. I'm going to take out that back little piece right there. So it ends at about the same time. And then I'm going to save so that I've got all my stuff. So now I've got a beginning clip and I've got an ending clip with that fast pace of the music. So it begins and ends the same way. Now we just need to add a couple other things to jazz this thing up. I'm going to put a little transition on each one of these clips as it goes in and as it goes out. Now what I mean by that is I'm not going to put a transition every single time it changes from clip to clip. But as we transition from moving from our interview person into our campus video, I'm going to put a transition on the beginning and ending of those. So here's what I'm going to use. Again, I'm going to do something kind of fast paced. If I come back over into my effects panel on the left, I'm going to close up the dissolve under video transitions and I'm going to go down here to zoom. There's a cross zoom effect that I like that I think is going to work pretty well. And so I'm going to use that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see. We're going to go to our first time that we introduce our B-roll, which is right here. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to go to my cross dissolve. I'm going to left click, hold, and drag. And I'm going to drop it on that left edge of that first clip. And let's see how fast that zoom is. It's just a really a great. It's too slow. Because again, double click, it's going to come in at one second. I'm going to change it to 10 seconds or 10 frames, excuse me, and hit OK. And then now let's look at it. Where you are. It's just a really. That's a little bit faster, right? Let me preview that again for you happy where you are. It's just a really... I like that. That fits better with our stuff. So 10 frame zoom is what I'm going to do. Now again, I'm not going to do it as it changes from clip to clip here. I'm just going to do it as we go out of our interview person into our B-roll. So I'm going to put it on the end of this clip. Again, I'm going to use copy and paste now. So I'm going to click on the one that we've got here for our cross dissolve on V2. I'm going to hit Command C to copy or Control C on a Windows PC. I'm going to click on the back edge of my second B-roll clip here. It's going to highlight it in red, and I'm going to Command V to paste. And now it's going to go out. There are many campuses with the zoom. So here's what that looks like. A little tilde in my program window, so you can see. You are. It's just a really a great place to get involved with your academics and beyond to figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. There are many campus events. And that takes us right back in and out. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way through for all of these. So I'm going to click on my first one. 
and I'm going to paste there. I'm going to click on the end of that section and I'm going to paste there. I'm going to click again, Command V as in victory as my paste or Control V just on the beginning and ending of when we go in and out of our B-roll shots just for consistency there so we don't have too many zooms over and over and over and over again. It just adds a little bit of a transitional element again that goes with our fast paced stuff. So I'm going to add that one there and I've got to go back at the very very beginning and add one on that back edge to that first clip as well. So now let's see what we've got with a few of these. Campus life to me. So that takes us in and out on that first one. All right, let's try our second section in here. It's extracurricular activities. All right, that takes us in there and then out. Everybody is in the same boat. Every right, and so you just want to check those to make sure those are good all the way through. And I'm going to save. So now to create that kind of faster paced video, we've added in lots of different shots to cover up our talking head of our interview pieces. We've added in a fast clip at the beginning and the ending by changing that speed of duration. And now we've got a fast paced zoom that's going to again keep our video moving as we go along. Let's add a title with some quick animation and then we'll call this video done. All right, I want my title to appear over my first clip here and be sort of fast. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape and a title and we're going to animate those things in. I'm going to close this essential sounds over here because I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to close that panel. And notice my window sort of shifted over here on the right as I slid over. If that bothers you, you can just reset that. Again, you can go up top to window, workspaces, and reset to save layout. And that's going to move everything back into place for us. All right, I'm going to go to my effect controls up here on the left. Now, if you don't see effect controls in your top window by your source, you can go to window and you can click on effect controls to bring that up. When I click on my actual clip, for v2 of that walkthrough then you'll see information show up in here if anything is closed down and looks like this we're going to end up using some of these drop down arrows as we go along for different elements that we create i'm going to create some information on my screen over here to do that i need to put in my tv safe areas of where it's safe to put text because I don't want any text too close to the edges where it can get cut off. Now to do that, you need to turn on this little icon that says safe margin. It looks like a square inside of a square. When I click it, it looks like this. If you don't have that icon, in the right hand corner, the bottom right corner of that program panel, hit that plus button and you'll find lots of icons that you can add to your toolbar to help you with your editing. Here is the safe margins. You can left click, hold and drag on that and drag that down in here and it will put it down here. Once you see it, hit OK. And now you can turn it on and off by clicking on those double squares. This inside box is where I want to make sure all of my text appears. And this outside box is where I want to make sure any movement stops that's important for my visual. Let's start with a little animated icon that we're going to make with a shape. So I'm going to come back to my toolbar over here that is in between my project panel and my timeline. I'm going to find my pen tool and left click and hold on that and I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. Once I have the ellipse tool selected, I can actually create a circular item. And again, so I don't mess up anything down here, make sure all of your other tracks are locked except for V2. And I'm going to put my mouse on top of the visual in my program window. I'm going to left click and hold and drag. And while I'm dragging, I'm going to hold down my shift key and that's going to make it a perfect circle shape for what I'm doing. And I'm going to drag out a circle about so big. Nothing massive, but that's the size. Two things you'll notice. Now again, remember I had my first clip selected over here in V2 when I did that. And I've got my visual over here at my program window. Now over my effect controls, besides just that video with motion and opacity and time remapping that showed up, I also now have a graphic. And if I look above here, I have a graphic above my walkthrough stop. Now, wherever I had my playhead is where it's going to begin. Don't worry about that. We're going to adjust that in a minute. I want to reposition this, and that is going to be under graphics, not under video. If I change the motion under video, it's going to adjust what my picture looks like, my video image. But if I change it under my shape, right, and my vector motion, that's what I'm going to use to change this. I'm going to change this from this kind of grayish color to a fill of red so it matches with my theme. So I'm going to click on this fill box over in my effect controls. Now again, if you don't see this, if you clicked off of everything and you don't see anything in the effect controls, click on this graphic if you need to. 
and then you can get back to where you are. All right, so I'm gonna change the color of this. I'm gonna click on the fill box, and when I double click on the fill box, a color picker will pop up. I can either select a red anywhere in here to try to choose to match that red, or you could use your eyedropper tool and you could pick a color off of here. So I could pick this red from over here or from here or from here to get different shades of the red of what you want. I'm gonna click on that one right there and select that as my red color and then click OK. I don't want a stroke box, but you could turn a stroke on for certain things if you wanted to, and you could add a shadow to it, just elements of graphic design if you wanted to. So that's for the appearance for my shape. What I need to do is change the position of my shape. And so that is located under vector motion with position and scale. The left is the 960. That is my X axis horizontally left to right where I position it. If I put my mouse over top of that and left click and hold and drag, you'll see that I can move it over left to right. And the right one is my Y position. If I put my mouse over that and hold, you'll see I can move it up and down. So I'm going to bring it down to roughly about right there. And I'm actually going to move it over a little bit too because we're going to have it pop in about that spot right there. So that's where I want that circle to eventually land to do all of our text. I'm going to have this circle fly in and then we're going to have our text reveal. I'm going to Command S to save that. And then I'm going to shorten this graphic up because I want it just to appear over my walkthrough right here. So I'm going to come down here into my timeline. I'm going to drag it all the way back to the left and then I'm going to shorten it back up so it is just the length just actually I'm going to zoom in so you can see I'm actually going to get it to stop right when my cross zoom comes into play so I'm going to drag it back to that where that left edge of that cross zoom begins that's going to be the end of that graphical element so right now it just sits there we're going to animate it in a second all right that's where I want it to go out is where that zoom appears so playing it real time all right, you'll see it's going to go away in that spot. All right, now with that still selected, with my graphics selected here in my timeline, I'm going to come back up here and I want to add some text this time. So I'm going to come to my toolbar again and I'm going to find my type tool and I'm going to click on that T in my type tool. And then where this area of this circle is, I'm basically going to do a little bit of a visual split here. I'm going to left click, hold and drag out a box and you won't see anything. And then I'm going to let go. And then what that's going to do is create a text element over here. So if you see now in my effect controls, I've got a text element and I've got a box. And I can adjust the shape of that box by making it longer or shorter if I need to. And I'm going to type inside that box. I'm going to type in the words in all caps, Campus Life. Now I'm going to change this to a different font size. I'm going to change this to a different font family. And I can do all of that over here in the left under effect controls, but I can also go and change my workspace up at the top here to graphics and then come over here to essential graphics and choose edit. And then I can change all of my settings over here as well. So you can change them in the essential graphics panel or you can change them over in the effect controls. Both of those are usable. Just to show you how both work, over here in this text area, again, I'm gonna highlight all of my text just like you would in any type of editing program for any type of text. And I'm gonna pick a different font. I'm gonna choose um, Babus. You may not have that in your font book. You can choose that from Adobe Fonts, font.adobe.com, and you can turn that on, or you can use any other font in your font book that you would like. That's just the one that I'm gonna choose. Then I'm also going to make this bigger. And so this is in percentage here in terms of my size. So I can click on that little dot and I can drag it over a little bit to make it a little bit bigger to get the size I want it to be. And then I can also change the positioning here with these numbers under align and transform. Now over here, notice I don't have my align and transform in my effects panel I don't have that it's down in here right it's under transform here align and transform transform is over here so they match the same so I can change this left or right here notice it changes the number over here left or right over here and then I can pull it down there as well so that's roughly where I want that to be in terms of my visual you can again adjust that however you want to that's where I want it to pop in so that's what I want my campus life to look like. I'm going to go back to my selection tool and then I'm going to click off of everything so you can see what that looks like.
So here's how we're going to animate everything and how we're going to mask everything. This word campus life, I want to hide it and I want it to show up after my circle pops in. So let's animate the circle first. So on my program window, I'm going to click on my circle and we'll come back over here to my effect control. And remember, we've got multiple things. We've got a text and we've got a shape. So this circle is the shape. Campus life is the text. And you can see by those two, I'm going to open back up the shape one. Right? And I'm going to come down here to transform under my shape. Make sure that transform is open. And I'm going to change the position. To do this, I've got to add some keyframes of where I want things to be. I want this to end up popping on screen pretty fast. So boom, coming over you know, and showing up right in there. That's where I want this circle to pop on. I'm going to say roughly around 10 frames. We may speed this up, right? So let's go roughly where she comes in the door pretty fast. Roughly around 7 frames is what we're going to say. So I'm going to add a position keyframe. So I'm going to click on this little clock for position as to where that's going to end up. Now I'm going to pull my playhead back to the beginning and I'm going to add a second keyframe. I don't click the stopwatch to turn it on. I click this little dot right here that says add or remove keyframes. When I click that, it's going to add another keyframe. It looks a little bit more of a triangle than a diamond here because it's all the way at the left edge. Now I'm going to change my horizontal position and I'm going to left click and hold and I'm going to drag until that circle is all the way off the screen. Now if I play that with my space bar, you see how that comes flying in right from the side over there. If I want that to come in faster, I can click on my second keyframe over here again in my effect controls window for that position under shape and I'm going to left click and hold and drag it closer to the other keyframe and it's going to come in faster this time. So if I move it closer it gets faster. If I move it farther it gets slower. Right and the faster definitely works better so I'm going to move it pretty close over there. Just kind of eyeball it. Let's do it one more time and see what it looks like. Let's do it one more time and see how fast it is. That comes in pretty fast. I'll move over just a little bit to the right. Don't want it too fast. That works pretty good. And then I'm going to save that so that's in place. All right, now we want our text. I'm going to mask the text to sort of reveal it as that flies through. So here's how we're going to do that. Under my text area over here, I'm going to close down my source text because I don't need that. What I'm going to look at is this area right here. If you hover your mouse over top of these icons, you'll see it'll say create a mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to mask out our text of campus life to adjust it to where it reveals on. Here's how we do that. In my effect controls, under the text area where it says campus life, that square, I'm going to click it. Notice when I click it one time, all of these mask options appear below that in my effect controls. And when I look over in my program window, it looks as if though my text has actually disappeared and I have this blue box there instead. When I put my mouse inside of that blue box, notice my cursor changes from an arrow to a hand. When I click, left click, hold on that box and drag down, there's all my text, right? So there's the word campus and there's the word life. And we're masking that out so it's hidden. I'm going to move that box over to the left so that the left edge of that kind of engulfs or encloses part of the campus. No, I don't see the rest of it. I've got to get that back. Put your mouse to the edges and you'll see you get this double arrow, right? We don't want that because that's going to rotate it. But if I go outside of that area a little bit more and I left click hold, I get the plus. I'm going to drag a box, a selection box around just those back right to the bottom one and the top one on the right side. Those little squares are going to allow me to adjust it. And now I can move both of those together. If I didn't do that, let me show you what happens. If I click on that left one at the top, notice it's just going to pull just that one. That's not what I want. So by dragging a box around those two, now when I go to pull... I'm going to hold shift to keep it in proportion. It keeps all of them together. So there I'm going to drag it out till I get the whole word campus life. And now I can see all of my text for that. Now to create this reveal, what I need to do is decide where this thing is going to pop on. So remember our circle that we added, it comes on and flies onto the screen right around in here. And that's the point where I want the word campus life to reveal. I just scrolled down over here in my effect control so I could see back where my shape keyframes were made. 
Okay, so my mask path is what I want to adjust. So now that I've got that playhead aligned up roughly with my second keyframe for my shape, which is where my circle is completely on my screen, I'm going to add a mask path keyframe. So I'm going to click my stopwatch for mask path. That's the point where I want campus life to start to begin to come in. I'm going to move my playhead and my effect controls. Just slide it over a little bit here. And I'm going to add a second keyframe. So again, I'm not going to click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. I'm going to click on this little keyframe dot here to add a new keyframe. That's the point where I want to see all of campus life. So that's how I want it to end up is how it looks like on the screen right now. So here's how we move our mask. I'm going to go back to my first keyframe. I don't try to drag to get back to it or don't move around. Use these arrows that are located on the left and the right of where we add a new keyframe. That gets you exactly to the point of where your keyframe is. Because otherwise, when you start moving and dragging stuff, you may accidentally add another key very close on top of that. And the keyframe kind of looks like it's just one, but it might really be two. Sometimes your video and your animations can get a little wonky when you do that. So use these arrows to go exactly between back and forth between your keyframes. All right, now let's adjust our mask that we're on our first keyframe. Click on Mask Path and then click on Mask 1 up here so you can see your box again. Put your mouse inside of your box on your program window. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to drag so it keeps it in proportion so that box stays even and I'm going to drag it to the left so it hides all of campus. Now when I go back up here to my playhead and my effect controls and I drag slowly you'll see that it's going to reveal as I go frame by frame campus life. All right now let's see what that looks like. I'm going to come down here in my timeline drag it all the way to the left. I'm going to click in this gray area down here in my timeline so that all those boxes go away. And now I'm going to make my tilde key to make my source window bigger so you can see what it looks like. Campus. And if it comes in a little rocky like that, we've got this yellow line. Let's just render out our animation. So I'm going to go up top to sequence and I'm going to go to render into out. And it's going to change that over to red to green and from yellow to green and smooth everything out. Now let's see what we got. Campus. All right, so you can see how that reveal comes in. First, our little circle flies in, and then our text flies in. And that is how we create a natural sound with A, B roll, with L and J cuts, with some speed and duration to speed some things up, to add a nice little fast cross to zoom effect, and to create a quick animation using some basic masking of our text. Now let's talk export. So make sure that your blue box is around your timeline before you export. Then go to your top menus and go to File, come down to Export, and then choose Media. When your Export Setting box pops up, change your format to H.264. Change your preset to High Bitrate, Match Source High Bitrate. Where it says Output Name, that blue text is a link. We're going to click on that and make sure we're saving this in the right place. Make sure you chose that desktop folder and your campus life folder that we created earlier. Notice that Adobe has put some extra files in here for auto saves and previews. Leave all of those be. This is where you can change your name if you need to change the file name. Our format is going to be MP4 from us choosing H.264. Go ahead and click Save once you've confirmed all those things. We'll leave all of the elements on the right side as their default. On the left side where it says Source Range at the very bottom, we're going to change that from Sequence In and Out. We're going to hit that drop down arrow and choose entire sequence and then we're going to click on export. After everything gets done exporting, we'll take a peek and see how our final video came out. Campus life to me is a huge social aspect. It's about seeing everyone else on campus, meeting people, and just really getting in the spirit of college and just being happy where you are. It's just a really a great place. So all that's looking pretty good. I'll just jump ahead a little bit. Living at home and you're kind of on your own and you have that taste of freedom. All that looks good. Let's get towards the end here. Campus life is amazing. Fabulous. All that looks good. And it fades out at the end. Okay, so that's how we create a natural sound piece using A roll of our interviews, B roll of all of our campus shots, how you work with L cuts and J cuts, how you can use speed and duration to speed up your clips, how you can add simple shapes and text and then animate those items and mask those items. And that's some editing techniques to create a natural sound piece that you could use on a website or in social media. 
If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy creating.